Hi guys, welcome to Tech Know How Technologies, a quick technology guides. I cover a lot of different things, and today we're going to be covering how to install SQL Server on top of Windows Server 2016. Now, this version of SQL Server is Server 2017 on prem. And so we already have a server built with server 2016. It's already installed. We're going to do a lab demo of this. And we're going to, I already downloaded the package, but you can go to the Microsoft website, download a 180 day trial, and uh, that'll work for a lab environment if you're using it for anything with production in an actual enterprise. You're going to want to speak to Microsoft on licensing and such. So we're just going to follow all the prompts and then you guys can go ahead and ask questions, leave comments, and don't forget to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at MrDoll2. And all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I already ha have my server open. Um, I just mapped my drive to where I have this. And here it is. I'm actually going to copy this over to um, to the local drive just because it might uh, help the install come along a little bit faster. Shouldn't take too long to come over. There it is. All right, so we're going to just double click on this and click run, and it's going to get things ready. So we're just going to do a basic for this. Um, this is a basic SQL Server database engine feature with default configuration. And we're going to accept the terms. And we are going to go ahead and leave that default. So looks like it's got to download the install package because that was a pretty small package. Um, that wasn't the whole SQL Server. Um, so it looks like it's getting things ready. Just so you can, guys can see this, I am going to leave it running. If it starts taking too long, I will go ahead and pause it and, you know, do the editing so you guys don't have to sit too long through it. But I do want you guys to see kind of what this looks like. Now, this version of server I do have running in uh, VMware on my uh, ESXi 6.0 server. Um, two processors thrown at it with only four gigs of RAM. Um, obviously, I can throw a lot more at it considering this is on an actual uh, server. This hypervisor is a bare metal hypervisor, so it, I, I can throw up to 64 gigs of RAM at it if I really wanted to, but usually by default, I only uh, throw four gigs of RAM at it. If it's Exchange Server, I'll bump it up to 8 to 10 gigs of RAM. Depending on what the server is doing, um, I usually start out with 4 and see how it reacts, especially with like domain controllers and things like that. In a lab environment, or what I call sandboxes or fun boxes, I uh, only have 4 gigs of RAM on them. Alright, so it looks like it's acquiring setup files, so we're going to go ahead and pause right here. Actually, we'll leave it running. Doesn't look like it's going to take too long. It's almost there. It looks like it's, yeah, quite a, quite a few, but um, it's running through pretty fast. Now, when you go to download this, it will give you options to either pick the on-prem version or the cloud version, out now 365 slash Azure. I went with on-prem because my lab environment is on my server that's technically on-prem 
Um, if you want to start up a free trial and do this out in the cloud, feel free. I'm guessing, I'm not entirely sure, I haven't tried it yet, um, but I'm guessing that they might uh, have a server already installed for you. I don't entirely know because I haven't done that yet. Maybe in an upcoming video I will do that um, just to show you guys what it looks like. Um, that's why I just wanted to clarify for the download on what I did. Um, so this server is just part of our work group. It's not even a member of a domain or domain control or anything like that. This is literally just server 2016 eval, um, 180 day license um, that I threw together just to put this together for you guys. Looks like it's just about done downloading install packages. And now it's verifying the integrity of the file. So we are just about there. All right. It's uh, extracting setup files. Now, hopefully this is compatible. I did not go online and read to see if it can be installed on an older version of server, because technically server 2016 is going to be an older version. Um, hopefully there's no compatibility issues with SQL Server 2017. Um, if, there, if there is, we will work our way through it, find out why it won't do it, and then uh, we'll go from there. And I do have installs of Server 2019 up and running. Um, if you guys have or want to research more into it, they, uh, they keep uh, the wiki docs out in Microsoft that actually um, will tell you all the prerequisites and everything you need and all the co um, compatibility. Um, I just I did not have time to go through that today, so I wanted to get this video up and show you guys the install. Typically, um, on my other lab environments where I had Microsoft Identity Manager 2016 install, which requires a database, so I use SQL Server 2014 which was, the setup looked quite a bit different, um, but it was very easy to install and uh, very quick. So I guess we'll see how this is. I guess we could, uh, could I do a little review on, uh, on uh, how well Microsoft released this package of uh, SQL Server. So it says it's installing SQL Server. It's kind of weird because I didn't have options for the um, tool packs and everything else. Um, I'm wondering if those uh, will be coming up next um, on server to our s server SQL Server 2014. I know I had options on what packages I wanted to install with the SQL Server. Maybe because I picked Basic, um, I'm not going to get the toolkit. But if you don't really need to do much administration within the actual database and you only need an application to connect to the database and the application kind of takes care of it for you, then this would definitely be the route to go. I know sometimes SharePoint, you don't really need that full package and stuff. You just got to point it to it and SharePoint will kind of configure all of its containers and everything inside of the database for you. Same with like uh, MIM Microsoft Identity Manager. Uh, did that as well for me and I mean there's a lot of different uh, applications out there that require just like a basic addition of SQL for a database to be there or it also gives you the option just to use a Windows database that it pre-configures in a I'm guessing like a flat file on your local file system of your uh, server. <clears throat> now some upcoming videos while this is running I'll run through this some upcoming videos I wanted to do uh, a video on installing, configuring, and using Adexis. Uh, this is kind of open source, but not. You have to pay for licensing depending on how many computers and stuff, but they let you download a trial, which is really nice. And Adexis is a software to help you automate Active Directory uh, routine maintenance of like accounts and groups and things like that. Uh, even mailboxes, file shares, things like that. 
it is actually really nice. Um, it does not extend the schema of Active Directory, but it does give you a nice, quick, easy, clean way to run things through. And it is compatible with um, Windows PowerShell, which is really cool because you can do a lot of automation with Windows PowerShell. I currently do some in uh, the enterprise environment or the place I work at. So I, I really like Adexis. Um, it's actually not priced that bad for a company to purchase. Depending on how many users you have in your environment, that's how they kind of rate it. And then the cost per year for maintenance, uh, updates, and support. So a lot of software companies will charge the same style like that. Like you have X amount of users in your environment, so you have to pay this much. And then an ongoing maintenance or support costs as well. I mean, that's how open source uh, uh, software, even uh, Linux, works. Um, you can download it free, put it in your environment, but if you want to support and all the good uh, quick uh, patches and stuff, you're going to be paying for that yearly support, especially if it's in a production environment, you're going to want that. So if it goes down and you don't have someone that can very rapidly look at it from an engineering aspect inside of the massive environment or network infrastructure that you may have then you're probably going to want that support to be able to lean back on that um, provider and say listen we need this up within this amount of time and they usually create contracts with SLAs or uh, service level agreements so just some quick little education on that stuff Looks like this is already uh, well over three-fourths of the way done, so it shouldn't take too much longer, and then we can wrap this video up. Um, as you can see, there was really not much at all to do for this install, um, which is actually really nice. Uh, so far, it looks like it's going in good. Looks like it's, yeah... Complete it. It's completing action, running actions. So, and maybe some upcoming videos. I'll also do uh, installing like Exchange ser uh, Server 2013 on prem uh, into a server um, and get that connected to your Active Directory and create some mailboxes with some users. And then I wanted to also show you guys in some upcoming videos uh, Orange HRM. It's uh, almost like an HR software that you would enter in the employee information. Um, it stores it in a database. You can export it out through Excel. The cool thing I like about that is you could actually automate that into like a Dexis or PowerShell to automatically create the users, the mailbox, and the file shares and stuff like that based off of what HR is entering. And so I use it for testing at home. Uh, maybe try and get it hooked up to like MIM or Dexis or just PowerShell itself, use, utilizing an Excel file, things like that. And then I also wanted to show you guys um, Universe Sandbox. I still have not gotten to that video. And we'll go from there. So it looks like it's just about done. If you look, actually look down here, oh, there we go. Okay. So I guess it. you can connect now, customize, install SSMS. So the installation has completed successfully. So yeah, this is definitely compatible, and it doesn't look like I really had to do anything. So we're going to try clicking connect now. Oh, yeah, look at that. SQL CMD. We're in SQL. Well, this is almost like SQL Plus, so you can run your SQL commands to build your databases right there. Um, I'm just going to quickly see where. Okay. Uh, configuration Manager. Let's open this up once. Well, look at that. There we go. Alright, so that's there. Um, 
This is an integrated environment for accessing, configuring, managing, administering, and developing all components of SQL Server. Yeah, let's go ahead and install that quick. Uh, unless they're going to make me download a separate package, and then we'll, yeah. We'll go ahead and leave that for now. Let's Yeah, we'll leave that for now. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and close that. And we'll say yes. Come back into here. Import, export data. We'll take a look at that. So, yeah, there really was not much for you guys to do. Um, not much at all for us to do. This looks like this will export data for us if we wanted to. This is the installation center. This is what I was talking about right here. This is where you can come in and do a new No valid location. Yeah, I don't have a uh, here. Server reporting services. Install SQL Server management tools. This is what I was talking about. But yes, it's going to need to download stuff. Um, but yes, this is the part where I was talking about where you can actually customize what you install. So it this looks actually the same now that it's installed. So you could install other things in this. Um, and maybe I'll make a part two video to this. Um, I don't like going through Internet Explorer and I'm not going to make you guys sit through me installing Google Chrome. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Please comment below. Please follow. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment below. And thanks for watching.